In this video we will compute the azimuths of the sides of this closed traverse loop. We will do it first in the clockwise direction and then we will compute it again in the counterclockwise direction so you can see the similarities and differences in the process. First let's take a look at a worksheet that will guide our computations. This worksheet is designed to organize a very repetitive calculation set. First I want you to see there is an important question to be answered at the top of the sheet and that is will we be proceeding counterclockwise or clockwise? So how do we know if we are going counterclockwise or clockwise? Well let's look at our drawing. Here we have an azimuth of 205.2753. North is at the top of the figure. 205.2753 is in the southwest quadrant. That is, it falls between 180 degrees and 270 degrees. So if north is up and the azimuth given here is 205, 2753 in the southwest quadrant, then that is the direction going from C to D. Since we're starting from C and moving toward D, then the next letter in the sequence on this loop would be E, followed by A, then B, and then back to C. So when we go from C to D, E, A, B, and back to C, we are moving clockwise around this loop. Therefore, the rule we apply on the computation sheet will be that we subtract interior angles. In order for us to calculate the next leg in this loop, that is D, E, which comes after C, D, then we will use the interior angle at D because it gives us the relationship between line C, D and line D, E. So let's do that. We will start out our worksheet by labeling the very first line and that is C, D right here and we will record the known azimuth there, 205.2753. Well, we're going to calculate a back azimuth. Uh, you know that we pay attention to where this azimuth is within the circle and we either add or subtract 180. Here, because it's greater than 180, I'll subtract 180 and I get 25 27, 53. As we said here, we're going to subtract the interior angle at D. That angle is 112, 54, 17. Well, here you can see that I would end up with a negative number by subtracting 112 degrees from 25 degrees. I can make my life a little easier now by adding 360 to the 25 and this becomes 385 degrees. Now when I subtract 112 degrees I won't get a negative number. 385, 27, 53 minus 112, 54, 17 will give me 272 33, 36. So that is now the azimuth of DE. We applied the interior angle at D to get the azimuth from D to E, which is now 272, 33, 36. Now let's ask the question, is that reasonable? Yes, it is, because D to E is a direction of roughly west, isn't it? West as an azimuth of 270. Our azimuth worked out to be 272. That makes sense. So yes, this does look reasonable. Remember, we apply the interior angle at D to get the azimuth D to E. Why? Because that interior angle is the relationship 
between the direction from C to D and the direction from D to E. Moving forward from line CD, we got the azimuth for line DE. Now moving forward from line DE, we'll produce the azimuth for line EA using the interior angle at E. We know the direction of DE and we move forward by calculating the back azimuth. So I would subtract 180 from 272 and that would give me 92, 33, 36. And then I'm going to subtract the interior angle at E which is 105 41, 56. Well, just like last time, you can see that if I subtract 105 from 92, I'll get a negative number. So I can fix that. I can fix that by simply adding 360 to my 92, and it becomes 452, doesn't it? So now when I subtract 105 from 452, I will get a positive number. So that is the interior angle at E, and then the azimuth for line EA will be the difference of these two, 452, 33, 36, minus 105, 41, 56. And I get now 346, 51, 40. So one more time, let's ask, is this reasonable? Well, we see that line EA on the figure is just a little bit west of north. So its azimuth should be between 270 and 360. In fact, because it's just a little bit west of north, it should be closer to 360, shouldn't it? Well, our result was 346, 5140. So indeed, this is a reasonable result. Just as we've done before, we will calculate the direction AB by applying the interior angle at A to the back azimuth of line EA. 346, 51, 40 less 180 gives me a back azimuth of 166, 51, 40. And then when I apply the interior angle at A, I'm subtracting it because, once again, I'm subtracting all my interior angles as I move clockwise around this loop. And that angle is 72.3202. That is the interior angle at A. So therefore, in this case, you can see 166 minus 72 is going to yield a positive number. And that will be 94, 19, 38. Is that a reasonable result? Well, on the figure, line AB is just a little bit south of due east. Numerically, the answer was 94, 19, 38 which is a little bit south of due east, because due east is 90. So yes, this does look reasonable. Now, since my azimuth is less than 180, I will add 180 to get my back azimuth, and I get 274, 274, 19, 38. That is the back azimuth of AB, and now, I am going to subtract the interior angle at B to get the azimuth to BC. So the interior angle at B is 142, 2605. And this is going to give me then 131. 53, 33. So, does that look reasonable to you? BC is clearly drawn in the southeasterly direction. Our azimuth is between 90 and 180, so yes, this does look fairly reasonable. 
Well, at this point we've solved all four of the missing sides, but now we need to perform a check. And that is, we need to, we need to determine if our computations indeed give us the same direction to CD as we started from. You see, we have only used four of the interior angles so far. We have not yet used angle C. So that is the fifth angle. Well, let's do that now. The back azimuth of 131.53.33 will be 311.53.33. And when I subtract that interior angle at C, 106, 25, 40, I will get a result of 205, 27, 53, which certainly agrees with the starting azimuth. So yes, this is okay. I have now proven to myself that I've done the computations correctly. So far, we have computed this traverse loop in the clockwise direction. That is, we went from C to D to E, then to A, B, back to C, and D. Now, let's reverse this. So if we want to go counterclockwise, the direction that's given 205, 27, 53 must be reversed. We would find the back azimuth of that. So. If we subtract 180 from that, we get 25, 27, 53. That would be the direction going from D to C. As we proceed counterclockwise, the next line whose azimuth we calculate will be line CB, followed by line BA, then line AE, and then finally ED with a check again to line DC to ensure that we calculate 25, 27, 53 at the very end. Now since we are proceeding counterclockwise, we will add all our interior angles. So our known azimuth at DC, we just said was 25, 27, 53. So we will add 180 to get the back azimuth and we get 205 27 53. Now since we're going to line CB next we're going to apply the interior angle at C to calculate the azimuth at CB. So as we said we're going to add the interior angle now. It is 106 25, 40. So that works out to be 311, 53, 33. Again, is this reasonable? Well, 311, 53, 33 falls between 270 and 360. And in the drawing, going from C to B has you going in the northwesterly direction. That is between 270 and 360. Yes, this does look reasonable. So let's proceed then. If that's the direction CB, we're next going to apply angle B to get azimuth BA. So first let's then come up with the uh, back azimuth and that works out to be 131 53, 33, and our interior angle is 142, 2605. And here we're doing simple addition. Our azimuth will be 274, 1938. Our next interior angle will be a and the direction we will find will be A to E. To get the back azimuth we're simply subtracting 180 and that gives us a back azimuth of 94, 1938 and our interior angle now is 72, 
3202. Thus, the direction from A to E is 166, 51, 40. So having found AE, the next angle we will use is E, and this will give us direction ED. Well, the back azimuth of AE is 346, 51, 40. And when I add 105, 4156, which is my interior angle at E, you can see that my result will be greater than 360. It comes out to be 452, 33, 36. Well, how do I fix that? All I need to do is subtract 360 from 452, and I get 92, don't I? We've calculated the four unknown sides. Now we'll do our final check by applying our last interior angle, which is the angle at D, and thus we will get the direction for DC. The back azimuth of 92, 33, 36 is 272, 33, 36, and then the interior angle there is 112, 54, 17. And this gives us an azimuth of 385, 27, 53. 385 is not a valid azimuth, so we will subtract 360, and we get 25, 27, 53, which is the number we started with. So what you've seen here is two different directions for calculating the azimuths in a loop like this. We have to have all the interior angles, and we have to have one known azimuth. And for the two rules we applied, in the counterclockwise direction, we added the interior angle to the back azimuth of the previous course. And then for the clockwise direction, we subtracted the interior angle from the back azimuth of the previous course. So remember, once you establish the direction, if it's counterclockwise, you will add all interior angles or if it is clockwise, you will subtract all interior angles. By using the worksheet, you'll find the process organized, methodical, and will give consistent results.